After the 8 bay power aisle charger turned out to be a disappointment, I have been looking for another 8 bay charger, preferably one with a USB connection on it so that I could charge it off of a battery pack or a solar panel, that sort of thing. Looking on Amazon and eBay and a couple other sites, wasn't finding much. And I have been interested in taking a look at the Lada batteries that IKEA sells and thought, well, why not? I'll give this Jugo TJUGO charger from IKEA a shot. Well, this is it. There's really not much to the packaging. You get a box inside the box. You got an instruction manual, whoops, power cord, and the charger. So the charger has a little plug port on the side. I would have preferred a like DC barrel jack and then have some sort of adapter, but I think IKEA wanted to make this as simple as possible, so they just went with, you know, with basically this sort of setup, which is fine because this thing plugs into here, you plug it in to your outlet, which is being done by a battery pack. And if I could just sort out the wires here. I'll just talk about the first thing that kind of slightly bugged me about this thing was that it is kind of an, a sleek little like book looking thing. And then it has this chunky power plug coming out of the side of it. So uh, whoever designed this, a, a very nice aesthetic with the charger part, but then it's just like this thing's just sticking out like they couldn't figure out what to do with it and probably to meet regulatory and compliance in a variety of countries and have one design that supports multiple voltage ranges. This is this was the compromise, so to speak. After I plugged it in, I had it sitting there and charging batteries for about a week or so. I just, this thing tucked away. I didn't bug me as much anymore. But from a design side, it would have been nice if IKEA's minimalistic sort of industrial design for a lot of their stuff. It's just like, it would have been nice if this would have been handled in a more elegant way. On the back, there's a bunch of information that kind of gives you an insight as to what the charger's doing. It is tested by ETL for the US and Canadian market and complies with UL's 1310 standard for the United States and CSA's CS. C22.2 number 223. The charger itself is like a double insulated class two battery charger. They call it class two battery charger. It also shows class two as the input, which basically means in UL standards terms, but it also appears in some of the Canadian uh, the CSA standards, that this is a low voltage, limited power supply. And you're sufficiently insulated from any sort of high voltage electronics. There's other markings on here. The one other marking that I will note is that it is nice that on the back of this owner's manual, there is an additional certification that pertains only to Canada, but it's nice that it's been evaluated for energy performance so that when it's sitting here idle doing nothing, that the idle power consumption is, is quite low. Let's talk about usage. You pop this little thing open, it's magnetically held shut and it kind of snaps back on itself. And this cover kind of is easy to scratch. So it's not something that's gonna look pretty for a, a long period of time. I just ran, ran my fingernail over that and you can kind of see it, I don't know if it's gonna show up, but that isn't coming off. So it's a pretty soft plastic. It's neat that it's kind of like a book but I would prefer it something a little bit more durable than what this is. Once you're inside, this does kind of want to flap shut all the time. So when you're putting batteries in, it's, it's a little fumbly. Throw the batteries in. I'll just throw a set of these in. Set of Anna loops and the EBLs. I do have Lada's as well, but they are in test. But you get kind of an interesting response from this thing as you add batteries. You can see that white light flashing. And every time you add a new battery, it kind of flickers like a double pulse. I guess to indicate that it's checking that battery or giving you indication that it knows that a battery's been added. And that's nice. And that's it. You get this little blinking white light. And then once this closes, the light turns off and you can't see it. So it's kind of like an overnight charger. You put the batteries in and they're gonna be charged 
by the next morning. And specifically, if we flip it over and look, the rating for the output is 1.5 volts at 0.21 amps, so 210 milliamps for eight cells, and then 1.5 volts and 110 milliamps for AAA cells. So let's take a look at the charging specifically. I want to, because I won't be able to really do this when it's opened up because it is like, it is mains voltage and I'd rather not be touching it. So if I pull one of these out, pull one of the cells out, and I'm just gonna do what I've done in previous videos and hopefully not stick out anything line voltage. I doubt it would. We're gonna run it through here. Oh, is it doing the same thing? Is it doing the same thing that the, oh, geez, really? Ikea, see, this is what I was hoping it wasn't doing. You can see what it's doing, and that's why it reset, just like, just, it's the same behavior that you saw with the Power Owl charger, where it just blasts it with current. And it's hitting about two amps, 1.5 amp. This is not how a good, battery charger functions. Just to give a comparison, I think it's important just to show you what I'm referring to. Here's the lacrosse technology charger that I use for all the testing. I'll do some double A's and some triple A's. Unfortunately, this, this is as close as I can get to re reproducing it exactly the way it was, but those batteries are pretty close to charge, which is surprising that it's still, still trying to charge those cells in the lacrosse technology charger new already that these are basically charged because their cell voltages are quite high. If I grab this, I'm just gonna, and I know the display on this isn't the, isn't the easiest to read, but let me move some stuff out of the way. And we'll use this as a stand. And you can see, there it is. They're charging at 200 milliamps per bay. And if I just, yank one of these out of here and do the same thing I did before. The ammeter is visible. Cool, so getting ready to charge at 200 milliamps and then there we go, 200 milliamps. And it should stop briefly and then check. You may not see it on here because it's doing it so quickly especially because it's near the beginning of charge. But this individually charges and monitors each cell bay. And the IKEA one is not doing that. Let's open this thing up. I'm curious what's going on inside here. No, is it a security? No, it's not a security. Oh, it is Torx. It's just hard to see. Why is this not wanting to come off? What is stuck in there? That, I don't want to pull on the accordion part because that would probably rip. And what is holding all this down? And is this even meant to come off? Okay. Are there more screws? Hard to get leverage on it because it's, there we go you're leveraging on the part that you're trying to pull off. It feels like there's something else holding it down. So my guess is that this has probably got to come off. Let's see if I can get a screwdriver down inside there. Yeah, I think if this comes off, then I, I bet you there's some hidden screws. Yeah, there are. It's just little feet, a little like, there, there it is. And there's three more screws. I think I didn't force that off. Well, this is just polypropylene. Okay. All right, let's see how this goes now that I'm not trying to 
There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. Let's see what we got inside here. Is it just a power owl without AC power supply? Okay, I don't bend all these little tabs out, so let's be careful. There's the case, the top case. Uh, it is polycarbonate with some ABS, and it has, interesting. That's weird. They wrap the LEDs that are bare. This must be line referenced. This whole, no, because the contacts can't, you can touch the contacts. Okay, there's the board. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but there's this weird, I don't know why they would do this. Why this would be sleeved with, <laughs> why do that? I don't understand. There's two LEDs here. Unless these LEDs are on the non-isolated side of the supply, and this is supposed to be double insulation, but then what about the top part where you touch with your finger? And you touch up here, there's no insulation there besides the plastic. Anyways, that's a weird, it's weird. Here we go. Here's our battery charging circuitry. And it comes out. Wow, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's quite a bit of going on there. Quite a bit of bit of bit of. Let's make sure that all of the big capacitors that are, the big capacitors are discharged. So this guy, yeah, he's discharged. We got line voltage coming in right here. Comes in through a fuse that's heat shrunk. A common mode choke for noise suppression. Then there's another inductor, it looks like here. Just a wire wound inductor. And then full bridge rectifier. So common mode choke to the full bridge rectifier back to an inductor that's probably used for the switching stuff. And then some bulk capacitance to smooth out the DC rectified voltage. And then a little, it's like a ferrite bead for some more noise. noise reduction and then it goes to the chip and a pulse transformer that is used for the safety isolation and dropping the voltage down to whatever voltage it's using for operation which I would imagine is probably in the vicinity of 10 volts ish both the capacitors on the secondary side of the transformer are, one's 25 volt rated and the other one's 10 volt rated. It looks like it does create two rails. Maybe it has two secondaries or it's just using two different switchers to go from a higher voltage to a lower, to two different regulated lower voltages. There's a lot on this board. Despite it not charging the way that I'd like it to and the way that most chargers that I've seen it is an interesting board. There's a lot going on on the back of this board. On a, now granted, it's a single-sided board, so there's a lot of stuff that looks like it's really complicated, but it's important to notice that it is a battery charger, and a lot of this stuff is gonna be repeated because you're charging across eight cells. All the stuff here on the left side is the high voltage conversion. The transformer is right here. You do have great separation. There's a creepage notch here and maintains really good isolation. This looks like it's about, and it's metal, so it's, let's just, yep, didn't shock me. So it looks like a good 10 millimeters of spacing, but yeah, even across those pins, and then there is an optical isolator uh, here for the, for the feedback to, uh, on the primary side. And that even maintains like a millimeter spacing. That's pretty good. That's pretty well done. Actually, that's really well done. And then the creepage, the creepage notch from all the low voltage stuff so that you don't get, you know, high voltage mains on your one and a half volt pins here that you're touching when you're putting the battery in. So that's good. All the caps are rated 105C. I mean, you could get away with 85C in this instance because there's 
just had a lot of heat being built up here. And heat shrink over the fuse, so if it pops, it doesn't vomit its contents all over the low voltage side of the board and perhaps cause other intermittent contacts and faults, so that, that's nice. And then there are two switchers here, or two regulators, which I do believe they are providing the 5 volt rail and like a, a regulated rail down to the what's being done on the battery charging circuitry. So one probably provides power to the main IC and the other one I think is doing more regulating for the constant voltage but variable current output. So that's basically how the you know nickel metal hydride cells charge. Yeah, it looks like then what's going on is there is independent cell charging. So you have one big chip. This is very similar to the way that the Power Owl looked. It had a microcontroller that was driving each one of these transistors. It is individually pulsing and has the ability to, when it's not pulsing and charging, it's got feedback to be able to read the voltage off that cell and then determine is it charged, is it not charged. That's basically what's going on for each one of these. These top parts here are the positive sides of the terminal for the battery charging, bottom side here for the double A's, and then there is a separate channel for triple A, unlike the Power Owl, which had the same looped in metal piece that went between the double A and the triple A, which was just horrible because it would slam the, tri the AAA cells with the same amount of current, which they're way lower power handling capacity. And I just spotted the temperature sensor right there, RT1. That's weird. Why is it there instead of anywhere in this vicinity? Uh, but there is a temperature sensor, it's right there. I think based on the way that they're charging these and they're hitting each one of these individually, I guess this, I don't know, why is this here? Why is it not even in the middle or, it's very weird. Okay, perhaps because they designed this to have this over the top and then to have a lid over it, that this whole construction has been evaluated in one complete design, which makes sense since they designed it themselves, so that this temperature sensor is monitoring the whole thing, no matter whether you have one cell or you have eight cells. The last bit that I wanted to say before I forget is the Hall effect, which is sitting right there. It's just right in the middle. And that's what picks up the magnet, which I just saw when I was taking this apart. You can see it on the back side of this. There's the magnet there. And it is what gets close enough to this Hall effect to turn off the lights. Finally, there is a red LED that gives you if there's a fault or a non-rechargeable battery indicator. It appears you kind of have to go and hunt around and figure out what cell caused it, which is a bit strange. It's a little bit more cumbersome if you put a bunch of cells and it's like, oh, red LED. Overall, what do I think? It's a charger. It works, it's safe, it's designed well, like this is put together very well. If you buy this charger with IKEA batteries, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any concern about using that sort of charger. If you're buying this charger and using it with other batteries like the Eneloops or the Eneloop Pros or you know, the EBLs seem to be decent with whatever you charge them with. Industrial design, they got that stuff down. The exception of that little, this plug thing. And if I snap this back on, I'll probably be taking it back apart again soon anyways. Oh, does it slide down? Oh, it has little keyhole slots. How cute. So it just goes in this way and you just pull it. That's pretty cool. Anyways, it's back together again. That's the IKEA Chugo battery charger for double A's and triple A's. I don't have any more words to say. That is it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.